Excuse me, but I've been such a scatterbrain lately. Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review for Night of the Demons 3 from 1997. If you haven't seen the film guys, this is going to be a spoiler review so maybe not continue watching this but if you have seen it or you don't care about spoilers then continue watching. This is one of the films in the franchise that I found it hard to get a hold of because the film didn't get a theatrical release in the UK. It only got a limited release in the US, but it was very hard to find this film. Even in a video store, it was hard to find it. I would always see Night of the Demons 1 and 2 in the video store all the time, but I didn't even know part 3 existed. And I think at one point the movie wasn't even called Night of the Demons 3, that was just a tag on the end of the actual title that we got. I think it was called Demon House, Night of the Demons 3 at one point as well. So it was quite hard to find, even when I got access to the internet. Eventually I did see it. Now, when I first saw the film, I thought it was cheap and nasty, but there was something about it that had charm to it and I liked it at the time. So getting into it again, I was quite weary. The only returning character once again was Angela, played by Mimi Kincaid, and she's back again to terrorise a new bunch of characters. The film came out one year after From Dust Till Dawn, and the reason I'm saying this and the reason I'm comparing it is because they had similar plot lines. There's these characters who do something bad, possibly rob a store, they're on the run trying to get away from the police and in doing so, they have to hold up in a certain place for a while so they can escape again. But in doing that, they're terrorised by demons, just like from Dusk Till Dawn. Although the characters were interesting, I think this is the first time in the franchise where I didn't like any character. And it's hard to latch on to characters in a film and enjoy the film when there's no characters that you can put yourself into. So if there's no characters that you can latch on, you really don't care about anybody in the film. As for the acting in this, movie if you thought the acting in the first one was bad and the second one the acting was pretty good but if you thought the acting in the first one was bad then maybe avoid this one because the acting in this one was atrocious aesthetically i think it looked like an episode of are you afraid of the dark only it's obviously got a lot of swearing in it and there's a lot of blood so it just felt like that are you afraid of the dark episode? And you've even got the same look of the aesthetic to it, as well as the camera angles as well. I don't know why they kept on giving us these diagonal camera angles. Sometimes it was okay to do that, but they kept giving them every couple of scenes. Just like Night of the Demons 2, footage from the first movie was used in this one, but it was a little bit more obvious because it was 1997. Now this is nine years after the events of the first film, Camera quality, even though the quality in this film wasn't great, the quality in it was a lot different to the quality in the first movie. So when we see Angela going through the, the hallways in the house and then leading out to the 1997 footage, it was clear and obvious that this wasn't the same film or the same time they filmed it, as well as... Um, Angela's makeup as well. Her makeup in the first film was fantastic, but the makeup in this one, it wasn't so good. Exterior-wise, they didn't even try to make the house look anything like the house from the first one. It gave me flashbacks to seeing Halloween 5, when we see that great big house that's supposed to be the Michael Myers house. Looked nothing like it. And it's the same with this one. The house that they're at, with the exterior shots, even the road leading into it and the gate, looked nothing like the first movie. Some of the practical effects were still decent at best. However, they used a lot of CGI in this film. The beginning of the movie looked like the quality of a, a video that you would see on a Windows 95 demo disc. It was 1997 at the time, so I guess when they looked back at the footage, they thought, wow, that looks fantastic and really high tech. Something I did appreciate, the one thing that I really liked about this one was the simplicity of the ending of the movie. It took it back to the original in 1988. As you know, in the original, all they had to do to win maybe not defeat the demons but all they had to do to win was get out of that gate and go across that underground stream that was simplistic in the first one and in this one they do the exact same thing with the second one it was a little bit more convoluted but as this one goes back to the the rules of the original that's something that i did like albeit we did see angela getting pulled out a little bit and then bursting into flames 
and into a skeleton, but we find out at the very end of the film, Angela's still alive anyway. She's back in the house to terrorise whoever comes to the house later on. According to Kevin Tenney, he was the editor in this film, so he edited the movie. He was the director of the first film. He said that there was a lot of footage that was cut from this film that would have made the film a lot better, and he said that if this footage was included in the final cut, this would have been his favourite movie of the entire franchise up to this point. Not too sure how true that would have been, but he seems to think so. Overall though, guys, it was a bad film, but it was watchable. There was something about it that made me want to see it through to the end. I have seen a lot of bad films in my time and I've just turned them off because they were terrible. Like recently I was started to watch Founders Day and I only got 10, 15 minutes in and had to turn it off. Whereas this one, this one is probably a worse movie, but there's something about it that has a little bit of charm to it and mystique that just made me need to watch it to the very end of the film. So although it is a bad movie, it's somewhat watchable and I'm guessing that's a positive. So what are your thoughts on Night of the Demons 3, guys? Was it bad? Was it really terrible? Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think and I'll talk to you soon. The meeting adjourned. To get you, Barbara. Ever play Skin the Cat? Ah! Ah! Someone's in the back!